Good morning, everybody. Um, doing another training video here, uh, tax planning video, tax strategy video. Um, so today I, I, I had some questions brought up to me. This is just after tax season ended or extension season. So we've been filing a ton of tax returns. And I've had several people ask me about tax planning, uh, ways to generate refunds versus uh, lowering taxes um, and stuff like that. And so this this video can be directed to anyone, but it might have more of a specific audience with people that are probably making uh, less than two hundred thousand a year in revenue, um, potentially being single parents or, or uh, parents of one or two children. And and in this video, I'm going to use scenarios uh, in the tax offer to show how things play out. Uh, but if if you're if you're you know married with kids uh, and making over five hundred thousand a year, then this video probably might be a good FYI, but not really uh, apply to you. Um, so just a heads up that though I'm sending this out to everyone and uh, of all my clients, it, it really might only have a target niche audience. So if you are making above 200,000 a year in revenue, you can probably skip this. Um, anyway, so uh, to, to preface this, this call, um, I guess the other thing is this call might be a little bit longer. This one might be about 30 minutes, maybe, or this meeting might be about 30 minutes or more. Uh, so just keep that in mind too. Um, and to preface this, uh, the typical accounting firm um, does tax planning usually in November, December timeframe. Uh, typically that runs between two to $5,000. And basically what they do is they take all your information from the prior year, bombard you with a thousand questions to come up with an estimate of what your income is going to be for the current year and then pretty much do a tax return in December to estimate where we think you're going to be when we actually do file your taxes uh, the following year. Um, this is a good way to decide what certain things you want to do just before the end of the year to be able to um, lower your taxes or hit a certain point. Now, I have offered these services when I was in other accounting firms. I haven't really offered them in my own accounting firm, mainly because my primary target client is making less than a million dollars a year in revenue. Uh, and, and I also typically say, look, there's not a whole lot we can do actually at the end of the year to change where your taxes are going to be uh, because we're already, I'm, I'm trying to help you be as aggressive as possible on business expenses. And so if you're already as aggressive as you are, then there's not a whole lot you can do to change where your numbers are going to be and what taxes you owe. I mean, we can, we can do other things to get your taxes lower, uh, but a lot of times those things are kick the can down the road type tax planning strategies that really will come back to bite you later when the tax man comes calling. For example, the economy changes, uh, your situation changes, uh, you decide to increase revenue through other ventures or, or something like that. And so usually, like, for example, we can use what's called Section 179 depreciation. That was a lot of times what we would use for these tax planning things. We'd say, oh, this guy who's making $5 million in revenue went out and bought $500,000 worth of equipment. And in order to target the best tax bracket, we're going to use Section 179 uh, depreci accelerated depreciation to write off all that $500,000 of equipment in the first year that he purchased it. The problem with that is the next year, that equipment's supposedly producing income for him. Uh, and he has no depreciation to take on it. And so now we're doing other tax gains 
in order to try to lower taxes in the follow following year because we used up the primary source of expenses to deduct against that income already. Or another thing happens is economics change or something happens and you're forced to sell or you get a good offer and you sell that equipment. And because we completely wrote it off in the first year, you now don't have any equity in that equipment. And so if you bought it for $500,000 and you sell it for $500,000, normally you wouldn't owe any taxes on that because you had no gain. But if you write off $500,000 in year one and you turn around and sell the equipment for $500,000, now you have a $500,000 gain and that creates additional taxes. So, so those are the types of games I don't like to play. I like to get aggressive on what we call permanent tax saving strategies, such as better understanding of what is a business expense and how can we uh, maximize our business expenses without necessarily spending any extra money. For example, we just, we turn personal expenses into business expenses so we can write them off and lower our taxable income. And that's not going to come back and haunt us later because it's not something that it has multiple year effects. Um, so I don't offer a lot of tax planning for that reason. I don't think two to $5,000 is the value that you get out of it because really when you, when you address taxes that way, your taxes are what they're going to be regardless of when we file them or what we do. And so I say, hey, look, you're going to owe taxes, plan to owe taxes, save some money, put it in an investment account so that it's creating capital gains for you or something. And then when, when we figure out what your taxes are, if you have enough to cover it, pay it. If not, do a payment plan. Uh, because the interest rate on the government's always the actual rules for interest rate from the government is prime plus two percentage points. Well, prime is what the Fed loans money to the bank banks at. So all the banks are always going to charge you significantly more uh, than prime. Uh, and so, you know, interest rates were phenomenal five years ago because prime was basically zero. And so banks were charging 5% to go get a car loan. Well, now Prime's at like eight and a half percent. So the IRS is charging about, actually Prime's actually, I think at about 6%. I don't know, it, it fluctuates a lot. But anyway, the IRS's rate right now is 7%, where your credit card's probably 30%. You can get a car loan for 10 and a mortgage for about eight and a half uh, if you have perfect credit, right? And so everything is more expensive than the IRS. So don't ever... You know, and so so don't don't take out a loan or something to pay off the IRS. And so that's why I don't do tax planning is because ultimately we get aggressive as we possibly can. We lower your taxes that way. And then any tax planning really doesn't provide a whole lot of, you know, you're paying for something that's not going to provide you the value of what you're paying for. That's why I don't do it. Uh, but uh instead i do these types of free videos and stuff to help you better understand how taxes work how to plan for yourself to 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 do stuff anyway so we had i had a, qu a couple questions since this tax season ended about oh why didn't i get a refund or why do i owe so much in taxes or, or what and really you know a, a, there's a lot of things that come into play in that and if you want to do tax planning in december if you come to me and say hey i want to pay you two thousand dollars let's do some tax planning and, and do a estimated tax return, I'll do it. Uh, but then the other thing is, is you're paying for an estimated tax return. Uh, and so you're paying two to $5,000 for this estimate. Then when we actually still file your taxes, we're going to be plus or minus. And so, so it's still going to not be exact. Uh, and that, that really all depends on a lot of factors. For example, like you might pull your statement from an E-Trade account or investment account to look at capital gains in November. And then suddenly uh, there's a huge market change in December because of Christmas or whatever, right? And then all of a sudden the 1099 that is spit out by E-Trade for your account is completely different from what we estimated. So, so there's a lot of factors that can go into play into estimates. And, and so hindsight always 20-20. We can look at your tax return that we just filed and go, oh, if we did this, we did this, we did this, we could change it. And yeah, but was it worth $2,000 to pay to possibly come up with that estimate in December 
versus realizing it's just going to be where it's going to be because we're already trying to be as aggressive as possible. So, so I don't really offer tax planning for that reason because I just personally don't see the value in it, especially at the, the target niche of clients that I have making under a million dollars a year. However, there is some things that can come into play uh, at different thresholds of income. For example, like I said, this movie is primarily targeting people that are making probably 200000 or less in their business and probably a single parent. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my tax software and, and I'm going to show you some scenarios of how we can do things in order to generate a refund or lower your taxes if, if you're kind of in that target niche. Um, and really what we're going to be talking about is called the earned income credit and the child tax credit. Now, the earned income credit and child tax credit are what we call refundable credits, meaning typically if you go out and you get a nine to five job and you have W-2 wages, they're going to withhold income tax, uh, we call it, you know, income tax withholding from your W-2 wages. And so you prepay your taxes. If you're a business owner, we call that quarterly estimated tax payments. Now, I tell everyone I don't want you to make quarterly estimated tax payments because I think you can get a better return than the interest rate on it, but our IRS is gonna charge you. Um, but anyway, so let's say you go out and you get a regular job, nine to five, you're going to have uh, income tax withholding from your W-2. And if you're above all these thresholds, then that W-2 income tax withholding covers the taxes on your W-2. Now, if you're below certain thresholds, you have what's called earned income in a W-2, active income or earned income. They, you know, And so then you fall into, if you're under the threshold, you fall into the formulas to create what's called the earned income credit or the child tax credit. Now, these are refundable credits, meaning that even if you didn't have any withholding taken out on your W-2, you didn't prepay taxes at all, the government will subsidize your living by giving you these credits back in the form of cash, even if you didn't prepay taxes in any form. That's why they're called refundable credits, because basically you can get money back even though you didn't pay any money in. Typically, if you're above those thresholds, the only way you get a refund is if you prepaid taxes somehow, W-2 withholding or quarterly estimated tax payments. Okay, so... The earned income credit, child tax credit, they are very specific formulas that have a very specific target of earned income. And if you're above that threshold, you instantly start losing it. If you're below that threshold, you don't get it. And so it's this very small window target. And that target is about uh, between ten dollars to $20,000, depending on your situation. There's a lot of things that go into play into this formula. For example, if you have one kid, they, they it's a different formula. If you have two or three or four, the number of children you have changes the formula. Um, if you're married with children, that changes the formula. You can actually get the earned income credit without having any children, but you have to make like a thousand dollars a year in earned income, like the, and then the credit's really only like five hundred bucks. So, so there's a lot of things that go into this, and the window to get it is very narrow. Uh, so it's very hard to target that, um, but we can, and, and and this is kind of what I'm going to be talking about here. And so the other thing is, is um, I'm going to be, my staff, if you're in this window, my staff is going to be reaching out to you in January when we start doing W-2s. And I'm going to have training with my staff and we're going to really talk about this so that they know to reach out to you to decide if you want to do this. Because the issue is, is if you have your own business and we're creating a loss in your business, but you have two kids, it, it might be beneficial to create a larger loss to run a W-2 for you. But as soon as we run a W-2 for you, you are going to owe payroll taxes. And payroll taxes is 10 point or 15.3%. So around to 15% for easy math, right? So if we run a $10,000 W-2 for you, you're going to owe $1,500 in payroll taxes in January it might result in a refund down the road, but you're going to have to float that $1,500 until we get that refund when we actually file your 1040. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and share a screen here. Uh, 
So, okay, so we're in my actual tax software. So I have found the best way to do tax planning is is to literally just put everything in the tax software and let the software do all of the formulas because these formulas are very complicated. So right now we're looking at a hypothetical 1040 with nothing in it. There is no income in it whatsoever. So let's say you make $200,000 in revenue in your business and we're able to you know, you hire some contractors, we take a home office deduction, we get aggressive on expenses, and we're able to write off $180,000 in W-2 wages. Uh, or I'm sorry, not in W-2 wages, $180,000 in business expenses. So you have a $20,000 profit in your business. Now, right now I am, oh, I haven't marked it single. I need to change that. So right now I'm what we call head of household. So it should be this one. I will mark it here in just a second. And I have two children. Okay, so let's see what happens when I go into the input builds. Let's make sure I change this to head of household. And now I'm going to go into my business. And I'm going to say I made a $20,000 profit. Okay, and then I need just one thing here. I'm going to say I got to throw some basis in here. Let's throw $50,000 of basis in here. Uh, you don't need to worry about that, but that it will just help the calculations work a little better. Okay, so let's go back to the form and see what happens. So back to my 1040, I now have a $20,000 profit in my business. Well, because I'm head of household, I'm getting $19,000 standard deduction. That gives me $600 in taxable income. Uh, so then I owe 10% of that, a little over 10%. Uh, so $61 in tax. But because I have two children, they went, oh, there is, in part of that formula, there is a refundable portion and a non-refundable portion. The non-refundable portion is worth more. And so it wiped out all my taxes. I own nothing. We file a zero tax return. I get no refund. Oh, yeah, that works great. All right. So then let's say instead of creating a $20,000 profit, Let's say I have $10,000 in wages. And so now we're going to do me a, uh, write me up a W-2. Um, so to do that, let's go into my income here. And I have a $10,000 W-2 with two kids. And so now my business made uh, $10,000 because I just took half of the profit and paid it to myself in wages. Now, remember, because I am writing myself a W-2, 15% of that, is going to go in payroll taxes. So in January, I now owe $1,500 in payroll taxes. And then we turn around and file my taxes. Let's say in June, we now show $10,000 in wages. I have my $10,000 in profit. So I'm back to that $20,000 of taxable income. Still have my $600 profit, $61 in actual income tax. That gets wiped out by my child tax credit. But now because I have earned income, I have that W-2 wages of $10,000 and I have two kids, I'm getting an earned income credit, which is refundable. And I'm getting that additional child tax credit, which is also refundable. So now I got a $5,000 refund. So I pay $1,500 in January. I am now getting $5,000 refund. So I net about... 3,000 bucks. Okay. So it changes with one kid. So let's go pull out one of the kids and see, and see how that changes it. So if I come in here and I change it to where one of the kids didn't live with me, not reported on this return, we go back to the form, same scenario, $600 in taxable income that gets wiped out because I still have one kid, but now my refund's about $800 less because my earned income credit went down and my uh, refundable portion of the child tax credit went down. Okay. So as you can see, there's different formulas. All right, well, let's go back and let's add that kid and let's increase my W-2 wages. All right. So we add the kid back living with me for 12 months. And then we're going to create a $20,000 W-2 so that my business has absolutely no profit. Now, this is going to mean that I owe about $3,000 in payroll taxes in January. 
and I have a break even zero to profit out of my business. So then we're going to go back to the form. 1040. There's my 20,000. Still at the $600 in taxable income. Still going to show $61 in tax. I get swiped out by the child tax credit. Now my refund's eight, almost $9,000 because I have $20,000 in wages, right? So uh and that because that I, it's because i'm maximizing my earned income credit and my child tax credit refundable portion okay but what happens when i go to thirty thousand dollars so now we're going to have a thirty thousand dollar w2 and my business is going to show a ten thousand dollar loss okay back to the form, 1040, $30,000 taxable income, $10,000 loss, so back to that same $20,000, $600 taxable income, and no, page two. Oh, now my refund's starting to go down because now I've started surpassing those thresholds to maximize these things. All right, so that's what we'll, so this is the game that we're going to be playing at this level is, okay, but what happened, you know, so, so there's a lot of things that go into play. And one, where is your business going to be in taxable income versus what do we want to run for W-2 wages? So let's, you know, maybe my business earns more money and I take a $20,000 W-2. Let's see what that looks like. So income, we're going to go back to 20 because that was when it was the highest. I think, um, and then uh, let's go here. And let's say I have a $50,000 profit in my business. Go back to the form. So now I'm gonna have taxable income of $50,000. Um, all right, so I have $20,000 in wages or $50,000 in, um, business income, which means my business actually made $70,000. Now I have a, you know, that standard deduction. So we're at $50,600 in taxable income. Oh, my earned income credit's gone. My child tax credit's gone because now my income is above the thresholds to be able to get those. And I owe $2,000 in tax. Okay. So maybe let's go back and see, okay, well, what if I have less income in my business? but still enough to cause some taxes. So let's go to here and let's make it $30,000 profit. Back to the form. Okay, so now we have $30,000 in profit, $20,000 in wages. So we're at $50,000 total income, gives me $30,000 of taxable income. I owe, oh, look. Now the, now the child tax credit ate up all the taxes, and I'm actually still getting a tiny bit of the refundable portion of the child tax credit, but I still don't get any earned income credit. I've, I've surpassed that in my income. So I get a refund of 600 bucks. So this is, this is where I'm, what I'm trying to show you is how narrow this window is. And, and if we really are going to target it, you really have to um, know your numbers really well. If I'm making $200,000 in revenue and I throw in my expenses, now we could we could forego some expenses, right? To get you up to a little bit higher uh, net income or profit out of your business. That could be one way we do things. We, we run a W-2 to 10 to $20,000, you pay your payroll taxes. We can get you a refund. It all depends on um, where your numbers lie. But let's go back and look at, again, where we had zero profit out of the business and $20,000 in wages, because I'm pretty sure that's where it was pretty close to the best. Uh, so we had $20,000 in wages. Business was at basically break even. Okay, let's go back to the form. 
And this was where we have an 87, almost $9,000 refund, right? Okay, so now let's talk about how we made sure that we targeted that exact number. So first, you come to me in November and we did some tax planning. So now you paid $2,000 for that. Then we filed a W-2 for you for $3,000. So now you're at $5,000 cash out. Then we actually did your real tax return for you and filed it. And that cost you another $2,000. So now we're at $7,000 to guarantee. And it's not, again, it's not even an exact guarantee because it's still an estimate. So we paid $7,000 to get an $8,700 refund. This is the problem that we're having with tax planning is really in order to guarantee or all but guarantee we're going to get you to this spot. Um, it costs you $7,000 to get an $8,700 refund. It's, I mean, yeah, I guess that's still money. You still net a profit, but how much better off would you have been to take that $7,000 instead of paying it to me and to the government, put it back into your business? increase your advertising by $7,000, or even just put it into a high yield savings account or invest it in the stock market. No, you might've not gotten a thousand dollar return on something like that, but it's still cash available in the event of, oh, let's say you just paid $7,000 and suddenly your child ends up in the hospital and you have a doctor bill you got to pay or something else. So so those are the types of things that I have to take into mind when I give this advice is like, yeah, sure, I can sell you these services to get to make sure we target this exact number to make sure we're there in this tiny little window of about ten to twenty thousand dollars. Like we have to make sure we are going to hit this tiny window perfectly to get to maximize your refund. And if I do that, I'm planning it and we do about it. It's not it's really not going to be worth it because that that money could have gone to something, something that would probably actually increase your revenue. OK, so but if you if you want to play with your own numbers and you want to come to me and say, hey, Jason, look, I know my bottom line. I got aggressive on my expenses and or we're going to come to you in January and say the same thing to you. Hey. I had a two thousand or two hundred thousand dollar revenue. We got aggressive on my expenses. I'm sitting at about a ten thousand dollar profit. Let's run a twenty thousand dollar W two for me because I think that's going to get me this eight thousand dollar refund. But the next thing is, is if that's like like you can't just think that way because all of a sudden I'm sending you the checklist then and saying, hey. I need all your 1099s and you go, oh, well, my business made zero. I got a $20,000 W-2, but I completely forgot about my crypto investments. Or I forgot about my E-Trade account. Or I forgot that, you know, something else. Like, they're like, like oh, I happened to sell a, my car. Didn't think I'd gain any taxes on it, but we've been writing it off as a business expense. And suddenly we have depreciation recapture on top of that. Like there's all these different facets that can come into play that you're not thinking about because you did it in February of a year before. And then all of a sudden we're actually putting everything together for your actual tax return. And I'm like, hey, you go through your checklist or I come back to you and I'm like, hey, where's the 1099 for your E-Trade account? Where, where's your crypto capital gains? Oh, you know, what happened with the car? You know, did you sell it? And so you when we're targeting that i might come to you in january and be like hey look you want us to file a w-2 for you that's going to cost you three thousand dollars in payroll tax to potentially get you an eight thousand dollar refund and then we happen to throw everything together and you had forgot about something and suddenly you're not getting an eight thousand dollar refund you then paid three thousand dollars to create twenty thousand dollars in payroll that we had hoped would get you eight thousand dollars and now you're getting a refund of two thousand dollars and so now you've actually lost a thousand dollars because we did that because you forgot something. And that's the same thing that can happen even if we're doing a tax tax planning in December that I say, hey, okay, this is everything we took from your prior return. What happened? We're talking about it. You forget to mention you sold your business car. And then when we finally get to everything at the end of the year, when we're putting it all together and hindsight's now 2020, we're going, well, why did we run payroll for you? Because really it just cost you a thousand bucks in the long run.
So those are the types of things you have to think about when we're doing this, trying to target this very narrow window. Now, if you happen to, you know, sometimes that just that just happens, right? Like, for example, let's say you're trying to start a business on the side and you're still doing your day job. Well, now you have a W-2 from an outside source. And let's say that W-2 is $50,000 with two kids and we were trying to start this business on the side, but because it's still starting, you only made $40,000 in revenue, but we were able to take $80,000 in expenses. So now you have a $40,000 loss in your business because we threw in your home office, we threw in all the supplies you bought, we threw in your internet and cell phone bill. And like we threw all this stuff together and we create a thirty dollars to $40,000 loss. So you have a $50,000 W-2 with two kids and a $30,000 loss in your business. Now, remember, if you're working for somebody outside of your business creating a W-2, you're all they're already withholding they're withholding income tax from you so you're going to get have income tax withholding on that w-2 so that's going to increase your refund the other thing is is you're not paying the full 15 percent in payroll taxes you only pay half as a traditional employee and your boss pays the other half and that's why i always tell everybody to hire a contractor because we can play with contractors taxes and you don't pay half the payroll taxes so let's go and see what that looks like Let's go back to our input field. So we're going to go to my W-2. This is where I'm working from an outside source. So let's say I have a $50,000 W-2. Now $50,000, if I was running it out of my own business, I would owe 15.3% on that in taxes. That's $7,600 in taxes. Well, if I'm working for somebody as a traditional employee, instead of paying $7,600 in tax, I pay half of that because I'm a traditional employee. So it looks like I'm paying, what, $3,800 in tax because this is the Social Security withholding and this is the Medicare withholding right here. So instead of paying the full $7,600, I'm now only paying almost $4,000 in tax. So it's, you know, that that's part of the thing. But I'm also going to have probably about 10% an income tax withholding on there. All right, so now I have income tax withholding and my business because we made less money because this is now a side hustle and we threw in a bunch of expenses. We created, let's say a $30,000 loss, right? So I'm in the very starting phases of trying to create my business. What did that do? I have two kids. I'm a single dad. I have a, my day job that made $50,000. I have my business that lost $30,000. I'm right back to that $600 taxable income. So that means my taxes are again, 61 bucks. Oh, but now I have $5,000 of W-2 withholding. Oh, I lost my earned income credit because I'm above that threshold with my W-2 wages, but I'm still getting the $8,000 refund because I paid in $5,000 and I still maximized that additional child tax credit, the refundable credit. So I'm still getting $8,000, okay? So that's another thing you have to think about is, okay, well, what's my business doing compared to what are my, my day job doing? What's that gonna look like? So that's another way you can generate a refund if you have a day job and we're starting a side hustle, okay? So these are just things you have to play with and think about when we come to taxes. But again, is it worth knowing this in December, January timeframe because you paid me $2,000 to do a tax plan for you just to tell you that, oh, as long as we get aggressive in your business, why are you paying me $2,000? Because you would have ended up in the same spot anyway without me doing any tax planning for you. Just the cards just happen to fall there because that's that's what I'm telling you to do, be as aggressive as possible. So we created a $30,000 loss just based on my tax advice to you about get aggressive and write off all your expenses. Had nothing else to do with it. You got your day job with a regular W-2. That is what it is because you make $50,000 a year. And then you had that side hustle and we got aggressive on it and created a $30,000 loss. So that results in an $8,000 refund too. Okay, well, let's say, okay, well, what if I'm doing very well, or I have a, not very well, let's say I have a very good paying day job, I'm making uh, 120,000 a year. Okay, well, let's go see what that looks like. 
uh, with a side hustle that happens to be losing a lot of money. Okay, so let's go and do that. $120,000 in wages. Oh, that was 12. So one more zero on there. And typically, when we see $120,000 in wages, you're probably going to see somewhere between twenty dollars and $30,000 in withholding. So let's do twenty five dollars to make it right in the middle, okay? But we're still going to have that $30,000 loss in our business because it's our side hustle that we just created tax losses. Okay, well, what does that look like? Still a single dad with two kids, $120,000. Wages, $30,000 business loss. I now have $90,000 of total income. I'm still head of household, so I lose a 20, I get that $20,000 deduction. I have $70,000 in tax, taxable income. So I owe almost $10,000 in tax. Oh, but at this point, now I'm getting that four, I'm maximizing the non refundable portion of that child tax credit, $4,000, because it's $2,000 per kid. Oh, there's my $25,000 refund. But look, I'm not getting any refundable portion. All that's happening is because I created a loss in a business of $30,000 and I had $25,000 in withholding that was meant to cover that $120,000. Instead, I went from 120 down to, uh, what, $90,000 in income. I'm getting a $19,000 refund. But really what that $19,000 refund is, that's an interest-free loan that I gave to the government, and I'm just getting that money back. I'm not earning anything. I What I should have done is gone to my HR and said, HR, quit withholding money from me. I would rather take that $25,000 and put it into an investment account, or I'd rather take that $25,000 and go to Disneyland or, or, or go to Tahiti with my kids and spend some vacation time with my family because that's priceless. Then to get a $19,000 refund, too many people see this $19,000 as free cash. It's not. You are living on less money a month in order to get this $19,000 back. You didn't get a, I mean, you got a refund, but you really didn't get a refund. You got back your money with no interest. You gave the government an interest-free loan. Nobody in the world does that. There's nobody you can get an interest-free loan except grandma, right? Like, that's the way the world works. If you go to the bank, this $19,000 loan would have cost you somewhere between 20 or 10 to 40%, depending on what type of loan it was. If you go to the shape, the, the you know, loan charts, you would have paid them 50 to 80% on it, right? Like, so you, this this money isn't, isn't free money. It isn't money that you're getting because you your employee this is money that you literally are getting back that was already yours and so keep that in mind too like when you get a refund unless you're in that tiny tiny little window between somewhere between about five thousand dollars of profit or wages to about twenty thousand dollars in wages depending on the formula depending on how many kids you have right all these factors go into play you're not getting money back from the government. If you're in that tiny little window with the right circumstances, yeah, you're getting free money from the government. But if you're anywhere outside of that tiny window, you're just getting your money back or you're paying money to the government, depending on how it plays out, right? Okay, so keep that stuff in mind uh, when we're talking about how to do tax planning. Okay, uh, so with that in mind, the other thing I'm going to say is um, let's look at this from a 30,000 foot overview. Okay. So if I want to maximize either my tax savings or my refund, we have two rules that come into play or a little bit more than two rules, but we're going to talk about this. This is a tax plan. So I can go ahead and close my stop sharing screen at this point. We're done looking at taxes. Taxes are horrible. Let's stop looking at them. Okay. So rule number one, Everyone hates to pay taxes and the government taxes everything, right? My job is to help you pay the minimal amount of taxes possible. So I don't know, you all have probably seen the meme, the meme or Facebook reel or, or whatever, right? Where you where somebody's like, I hate the government. Why am I paying so much tax? I go to work to earn money to pay tax on it. Then I take that money that's left over after paying the tax to buy stuff. And then another government charges me tax on buying stuff. 
Then I go, hey, I want a place to live, so I buy a house. And now I'm continually paying taxes for the rest of my life to live in that house, even if I don't owe any money on it. The government does a great job of trying to take over 50% of our taxes in various organizations, whether that's the federal government for income tax, state governments for sales tax, or county taxes for property or, or for property taxes, right? Like so all these different levels of government are taxing us so much, we're, we're basically working for the government. <clears throat> and that's like, you know, I tell everyone, read Tax-Free Wealth by Tom Wilwright. He's part of the Rich Dad, Poor Dad group. And I think I remember reading one time uh, in their group that typically you work for the government for the first three to four months of the year just to pay your taxes. So, so my goal is to help you minimize that as much as possible, right? So that's the first thing. The next thing is, if we're not constantly growing, we're dying. Because there will always be retrition. I have clients that I'm not the right fit for. And we have disagreements and I lose them. So if I'm not constantly doing initial consultations, if I'm not constantly trying to bring in more clients, eventually I'm going to plateau and then I'm going to start to go down because I'm going to have retrition. Whether somebody sells their business and so they don't need my services anymore, we have disagreements on something, they feel like I'm not doing a good job, they leave and go to another CPA, you know, God forbid a client passes away, you know, life, life happens. And because of that, I will always lose clients. That's just life. And everybody else is going to have the same thing, maybe in different formats, but you have the same thing. There will always be retrition. So if I'm constantly thinking I need to target zero profit in my business, create a W-2 for $20,000 so I can maximize an $8,000 refund, how many opportunities are you going to give up? How many, How you know, that's that's the thing is like, you're going along through your year and suddenly somebody knocks on your door and says, hey, guess what? I have this opportunity for you. Are you going to say no because you're trying to maximize an $8,000 refund when this other investment opportunity could result in $50,000 of profit that might only cost you, let's say you're, so even in worst case scenario, you are making a million dollars a year in profit. The highest tax bracket is 40%. It's like, 37% federal, and then I'm throwing in a few extra percentage points for state taxes. So we round to about 40%. So even if you're in the highest tax bracket, are you going to turn down $50,000 of guaranteed profit just because you're going to owe $20,000 in tax on it? That's stupid. Why would we do that? So you always have to have the idea that I am constantly growing. So why would I give up an opportunity because I'm trying to target a refund from the government when that opportunity is going to result in even in the worst case scenario, $25,000 in cash in my pocket after taxes. You're giving up an $8,000 refund for a $20,000 profit after taxes. So, so don't, you can't get so focused in on a certain tax number that you're giving up opportunities that could potentially make you a lot more money because if I'm not always growing, I'm dying. So that's that's the next rule. So first rule is taxes are always coming. There's two rules in life or two guarantees in life, death and taxes. You're always going to pay taxes. The next one is, is if I'm not always growing, I'm dying. And now hopefully I don't die until I actually retire. And then I go, I'm done working. And now I can go live on all my investments for the rest of my life. And I'm going to have fixed income, right? But even then I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to be playing the stock market every day. I'm going to be working in my wood shop, probably selling stuff on eBay. I don't, I'll come up with something, right? Because I'm going to get bored if I don't have taxes to prepare. So that's the second rule. If I'm not always growing, I'm dying. The third one is, okay, well, if I'm always growing, eventually I'm going to get out of this $200,000 profit world that I'm in where I was creating an $8,000 refund. And now I'm going to start growing to $300,000, or $500,000 of profit. And that means my, my taxes are going to start going up. I'm no longer getting a refund. Now I'm owing taxes. Well, if I'm owing taxes, 
that means I'm typically when I start seeing people owe taxes is around the 300,000 somewhere depending on your expenses grant this everybody's different depending on your industry that you're in and what we can and can and can't get aggressive on or if you have contractors or if you're an employee or whatever like so somewhere between $150,000 of profit and $300,000 of profit we start seeing you owe taxes okay but typically that's not a ton then at about $300,000 in profit to $500,000 in profit, that's when you really start owing taxes. We're saying like, like you're used to paying maybe two or $3,000 in tax and suddenly you're owing 10, 15 and you're like, this is, this is painful. Why do I owe so much in taxes? And then you hit that $500,000 profit or $500,000 revenue part. And then you start going, working towards that million dollar revenue threshold. And now your taxes are going from 10 up to about 30,000. And it's like, okay, now I'm really hurting. Why am I paying $30,000 plus in taxes? What else can I do? And so then this is where this 300 or 30,000 foot overview strategy comes from, which is step one, I start a business, a side hustle. I turn that side hustle into step two, which is create an S corporation. Then I start playing with expenses and wages to myself to minimize taxes. Then step four, I go, oh, I've maximized my expenses. I've played with it as much as I can. I, you know, I'm not going to go buy myself a brand new $150,000 truck every year. Because again, like, like I've said before, a thousand, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, don't spend money to save taxes. Spend money on things that make business sense. And that's because, again, even at the highest tax bracket, if I'm spending $100,000 on a truck every year to write it off, it's only saving me $40,000 in tax. I'm still out $60,000. Now, and I'm not saying I'm this way or I'm not getting mad at anyone or telling you you're right, wrong, or indifferent. I really don't care. But if I want to drive a brand new $100,000 truck every year because that's what makes me happy. That's what I want. I constantly want the $100,000 brand new truck every year. Great. Let's use it as a tax write-off, but don't do it just for tax write-offs because you're out $60,000 anyway. So we've now maximized our expenses to the most they're ever really going to get. Now we hit step four. We have to start looking for other ways to lower our taxes. That's outside sources. And the number one best way to do that is real estate investments. That's difficult. I'm not going to lie. Banks don't want to loan you money. They don't like working with people that have more than one house. Uh, they don't like working with small business owners. And yes, unless you're making over $27 million a year in revenue, you're considered a small business. Banks don't like working with small businesses. Um so there's all these different factors that come into play that make it very difficult to get into the real estate investment game. But a real estate, let's say a $300,000 home that we get, we, we tax, we, we do a cost segregation on, and so we do accelerated depreciation. And I'm going to talk more about this, or you can read tax-free wealth, or I've done an investment training video. Like I talk about real estate investment quite a bit in other venues. But that's when we start getting into real estate investment. So step, uh, I think, what was it? Step one, side hustle. Step two, S-corp. Step three, play with expenses. Step four, real estate investment. Step five is then start backing out as active in your operating company. That side hustle that turned into an S-corp that we were playing with expenses. Now you start becoming passive in that, Okay because rental investments are passive. So now we turn your corporation into a passive income. That's step five. Step six, completely passive. Now I'm living on the yacht in, Tahi uh, in the Bahamas, uh, living on rental income out of my rental properties and dividends out of my S Corp because I've hired a CEO to completely manage it. And I can live on that yacht in the Bahamas or whatever your dream is for retirement. And I have passive losses in rental companies that are creating positive cash flow, netting against the dividends coming out of my S Corp or other investments, such as, you know, my Microsoft, Walmart, Google, 
my my investment accounts, my crypto capital gains or whatever, my losses in the real estate are deducting against uh, all of that taxable passive income from other sources. And now I'm Donald Trump. Now I'm Donald Trump, real estate mongrel who has who is worth billions of dollars. And I've create aggressive accelerated depreciation in real estate investments that's net, netting against the bill, the millions of dollars that I'm getting in capital gains and dividends from other investments. And I still pay no taxes. And now I retire wealthy on my yacht in the Bahamas. So that's kind of the overall 30,000 foot overview of where you want to go. But if you are laser focused on, I'm turning down opportunities at $200,000 revenue in my business in order to create an $8,000 refund for the next five years. And I'm turning down all these other opportunities that come along, or I'm just trying to maintain the status quo. What are you giving up in the long run? My goal is to help you figure out how to be the next Donald Trump. My goal is to help you retire on that yacht in the Bahamas. My goal is not to just get you the maximum refund. My goal is not just to um, lower your and minimize your taxes. My goal is a long-term goal because that's exactly what I'm doing for myself. Because I've seen too many times where aggressive tax planning strategies that really are just kicking the can down the road, economy changes, something happens, there's ups and downs in the economy, we will never be able to control that. So there's always guaranteed a recession down the road, no matter what it's like today, that it will get worse, or it will get better. We have no control over that. And I've seen it happen where we've done the kick the can down the road strategies for very wealthy people, only to turn around because the economy changed, and they owed over a million dollars in tax, they didn't have the cash to pay it. So now where you filing bankruptcy and you use everything because we did poor tax planning, but you were happy because all those years that we were doing poor tax planning, you were getting a maximum refund. So anyway, I hope this is beneficial for everyone. This is probably one of the longer videos I've done. Uh, if you're you know in that certain situation, watch this video a couple of times. We're going to reach out to you in January. Hopefully it's uh, you know, and tell us what you want to do if you want to run a W-2 or if you don't. Um, so anyway, I really hope this helps clear up a lot of issues that people are having with maybe how much tax they owe or what they can do to plan better. This is kind of the general overview. Anyway, have a good day.